I'm Tara Polmeyer with Progress Texas, and I'm here with candidate for U.S. Senate, MJ Hagar. Hi. Thanks for joining us Thanks today. Thanks for having me. We're going to run through a few quick kind of questions to see where your values lie and how sure. we can connect to our audience out there. Our first one is on voting rights. If elected, we're just jumping right in. If yeah. elected, what policies would you put forward to expand voting rights in Texas and really put an end to our history of voter suppression in this state? You know, there are some things that are so key to the health of our democracy, things like a free press, things like trying to get money out of politics, corporate money. Voting rights is something that is so critical to the health of our democracy. There's so much that we can do, not just legislatively, but culturally. Um, I would say quickly things like, um, you know, the attention that's being brought to um, the naturalization uh, process where people are being disenfranchised of their voting rights because the the process of getting those packages approved has been slowed down mm -hmm. significantly sometimes in you know two and three hundred percent so I, I think that we need to do a lot of things things like um, making it a national holiday so that people who work you know nine to five jobs can actually on vote day. on election yes. day yes. Um, things like um, stringent ID requirements where you can't use a student ID to vo to vote for example um, Things where, let's see, what else is happening uh, that's that we could handle legislatively. Um, we have to be able to register online. We should be mm -hmm. able to um, register up to election day, not 30 days prior. There's all sorts of yeah. things that are happening that are making communities feel like it's there. It's unsafe for them to vote. Uh, there's a lot of work that needs to be done, um, but luckily we can do something about it. Absolutely, I appreciate that. On abortion access, mm -hmm. do you support repealing the Hyde Amendment, which prohibits federal dollars from being used mm -hmm. um, to help with the cost of an abortion? Mm -hmm. And would you support expanding Medicaid and including abortion in that expansion? Absolutely, and you know, um, being somebody who was receiving my health care through you know, federal funding when I was in the military, um, I saw this in, in real time where women would be deployed overseas. Um, we know that we have a sexual assault epidemic in the military and there would be women who didn't have access to reproductive health because of this amendment. So I do think that the Hyde Amendment prevents uh, women's health care services to, uh, from being actually deployed where they're most needed in the mm -hmm. most vulnerable communities that are facing domestic violence, that are you know, in the military, et cetera, et cetera. I certainly would support that. That's great. On gun reform, and I know you have some experience being in the military and things like that, what mm -hmm. are common sense gun reforms that you believe we can enact now? that are needed. Yeah, you know, as a combat veteran who has seen what these weapons do to a body, I've medevaced hundreds of people and it's not like it is in Hollywood, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I believe that I have a perspective on how weapons of war do not belong on the streets. Um, I think that we should stop the sale of those weapons to the public. I, I think that um, being in the military, uh, we go through a lot of screening and training before we're allowed to handle those weapons that is not, um, that restriction is not being placed on the public. Um, I think that, you know, being a gun owner, I do want to protect Second Amendment rights, and mm -hmm. I think that the gun violence epidemic is a threat to our Second Amendment rights. We have to do something about getting a handle on the gun violence epidemic, which expands beyond mass shootings, which are traumatic and traumatize everyone, mm -hmm. um, to domestic violence, accidental shootings, toddlers, um, suicide. There's all sorts of things that we can do. We need to enact universal background checks. We need to stop the sale of weapons of war to the public. We need to end open carry. We need to enact anti-trafficking measures that um, stop sending a quarter of a million weapons south of our border. Look, the bottom line is that the gun industry is big money and that a lot of that big money goes into the pockets of John Cornyn mm -hmm. to fund his campaign. And while we have people who are benefiting from the profit of the gun lobby, writing the legislation that would be putting gun safety protections in place, we're gonna have a conflict of interest. Absolutely. What, um, going on to healthcare, you know, we're just diving through these topics kind of <laughs> rapid fire here. What is your vision for access to affordable health care for Texans. I know this is on the mind of a lot of folks at home. How would how would this, you know, having of access to affordable health care impact Texans? Yeah, sometimes I feel like people don't understand that when we're saying access to healthcare that we're talking about affordability also. Some people mm -hmm. think that's just like physical access. I worked in healthcare for five years um, and I got pregnant with my first kiddo, which is a pre-existing condition. So I like to say my first pre-existing condition was growing inside my belly as I was getting laid off from my healthcare job in a state that has a maternal mortality epidemic. 
So I was terrified about, you know, where am I going to get quality health care from, which is a position a lot of Texans are in. We have the highest uninsured rate in the country. Um, and I thought back to when was I, you know, in the best hands uh, healthcare wise. It certainly wasn't when I was on my private insurance. It was when I was on TRICARE with the military, which is basically military Medicare. And I would have given anything to be able to go back to that. So I do want every Texan to have access to Medicare and to be able to be eligible for that and enroll in Medicare. That will solve the problem of the fact that we also have the, the highest number and rate of uninsured kids in mm -hmm. the country. Um, so I would like to be able to protect the hard fought victories that the you know the labor movement has won when it comes to employer provided health care. I want people to be able to stay on their program if they want it, if they want to choose that. Um, but I absolutely think we need to expand eligibility and access to Medicare for everybody. On to immigration, how would you ensure that our immigration system protects immigrants who are coming to our state, to our country, mm -hmm. and treats them with the dignity and respect that they deserve? I feel like a lot of people have forgotten that one of the things we fought for when our, we were forming our country was that we have a right to the pursuit of happiness and that that is something that we have to absolutely recognize and respect in everybody. Um, so I think we need comprehensive immigration reform, obviously. We need um, a reliable pathway to citizenship without artificial barriers that are slowing down, for example, naturalization you know, <laughs> applications. Um, we need to not uh, treat asylum seekers as criminals. We need to end family separation immediately. Um, I think that child separation is something that's offensive to most Texans. Uh, everywhere I go, that's kind of a universal nonpartisan thing that we want to see that end. The fact that that is a policy of deterrence, I mean, I just want to pause here and acknowledge that when we have a government that is um, using fear and intimidation to try to control people's actions, that that actually sounds like a government that we would be deployed to go and, and deal with mm -hmm. to protect people. And so it's a little surreal to have bled for our constitution on foreign soil like I have and then see my own government do something that is so un-American and is something that we are fighting against around the world. Mm -hmm. So we need to fully fund asylum courts, make sure that people get their day in court and that those packages are actually, those applications are processed uh, correctly and, and adequately resourced. Um, and we need to not be robbing the military construction budget uh, to pay for a wall that's going to cost billions of dollars and that that's going to require the government to seize the means of production in Texas, which is land, away from landowners and cattle ranchers that have been, um, that land has been in their family for generations. Uh, I just see us going down the wrong paths. I think that a wall makes people think of, you know, China and Berlin, and it is not something that you think of when you think of America as being a beacon of freedom and hope and democracy to the world. Absolutely. And finally, what is your path to winning Texas? And what do you want our audience and our Texans out there to know about you? I think the path is very clear. It is hyper-localized everything. We are on the road every day. We are out there. We've driven over, uh, I think it's somewhere almost 12,000 miles now across the state, back and forth to all of the different regions of the state, um, rural, urban, border. I mean, every everything. We have to get out there and talk to everybody. We need to ask people what is keeping you from being able to get food on the table, what is keeping you up at night, um, what kinds of things can you see from your government that you want to you know, see continue to happen, or what do you think that we should we call it a start stop continue sometimes in in like the business world mm. um i really think that we need to start um collaborating with and listening to regular working class people across the state and showing them that they have an opportunity to be able to vote for someone who not only share their shares their values but has faced the same challenges that they're facing now a lot of the people in office have never faced these challenges. They've never had to worry about depending on Social Security or where they're going to get their health care from. Um, you know, so I think the path to victory is connecting with people very clearly and authentically, making sure we talk to everybody and everybody's voice is heard and brought to the table. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you so much for joining us today. We appreciate it.